The Australian bushfires are horrendous. At least 18 people dead, thousands of homes destroyed, millions of hectares of land torched, half a billion animals burned alive. Look at this satellite image of the country. It's absolutely terrifying. And all because of climate change, right? Make no mistake, <clears throat> the tragedy unfolding in Australia is climate change based. Wrong. For weeks, we've been bombarded with this relentless, sustained narrative that man-made global warming caused and exacerbated this disaster. This is the kind of emergency that scientists say is made much more likely and more damaging by climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. And it's all total bullshit. Guess what the primary cause of these fires was? People deliberately starting the fires. Australian authorities are now working on the premise that, quote, arson is to blame for much of the devastation caused this bushfire season. Firebugs known to be responsible for lighting deliberately lit fires like this one. Were the fires intentionally started? Police have formed Strike Force Indara, comprising detectives from homicide and arson squads. Last time I checked, people deliberately starting fires had nothing whatsoever to do with CO2-driven planetary climate change. Figures obtained by news agency AAP show that nearly 200 people across the country have already been arrested or investigated by police for deliberately starting the fires. Nearly 200 people identified as having started these fires and probably hundreds more who have not been identified. In Queensland, police concluded that 103 of the fires had been deliberately lit, with 98 people, 67 of them juveniles, having been identified as the culprits. According to Dr. Paul Reed, co-director of the National Center for Research in Bushfire and Arson, around 85% of bushfires are caused by humans either deliberately or accidentally starting them. About 85% are related to human activity, 13% confirmed arson and 37% suspected arson, he said. The remainder are usually due to reckless fire lighting or even just children playing with fire. The disaster has also been made worse by the timing. It's the school holidays in Australia and many of the firebugs are teenagers. The other main reason why the fires are raging is because green environmentalist policies have outlawed property owners doing controlled burns that create fire breaks to prevent inferno spreading. As Miranda Devine explains, Governments appeasing the green beast have ignored numerous state and federal bushfire inquiries over the past decade, almost all of which have recommended increasing the practice of prescribed burning, also known as hazard reduction. It's a methodical regime of burning off flammable ground cover in cooler months in a controlled fashion so it does not fuel the inevitable summer bushfires. I'm here at King Creek. Fucking look at this. These fucking greenies and the government and these fucking wombats who don't want to burn shit off. Look at this, we're going to lose all our fucking houses and properties because of you useless pieces of fucking garbage will not burn off when it's supposed to through the winter time. Like we used to do years ago out in the fucking farms up in the mountains, burn all the undergrowth off so everything was safe. But you pricks, you want to fucking have a really good look at this, you fucking wombats. Look at the fucking state you've caused here. You are the biggest bunch of useless, loser, fucking pieces of garbage God ever had the misfortune to blow fucking breath into. In East Gippsland in the state of Victoria, protesters successfully stopped one of these controlled burns from happening, with one protester quoted as saying, I'm more worried about climate change. So because of green policies preventing the vital forest management process of clearing areas via controlled reduction burns, these bushfires have spread far quicker. In many parts of Australia, trees were legally designated as carbon sinks to offset CO2 emissions. This made it illegal for Australians to fell trees on their own property to create fire breaks. This then aggravated the spread of the bushfires. A firefighter was fined $100,000 for creating a fire break on his own property. And surprise, surprise, his house was the only one that survived the bushfires in his area. Because, and I know this is hard to believe, fire breaks prevent the spread of fires. These environmental regulations that outlawed the creation of fire breaks worsened the previous Australian bushfire disaster in 2009. They knew this for at least a decade, yet the same laws remained in place thanks to the Green Lobby. So the very same enviro extremists pointing the finger at you and I for our carbon emissions, exacerbating the bushfires, are themselves infinitely more responsible 
for exacerbating the bushfires. They're the ones responsible for the half a billion dead animals and they've got the nerve to point the finger in the opposite direction. Data also shows there's been no significant decrease in rainfall in the affected regions. Droughts in the affected regions were caused by a natural weather phenomenon, the Indian Ocean Dipole, not by man-made climate change. Temperatures haven't been significantly higher either. In fact, during the years 1899 to 1901, average December mean maximum temperatures were well above 38 degrees. As James Dellingpole writes, to be clear, there is zero evidence of any change in climatic conditions that might have increased the likelihood or severity of these bushfires. This is not, repeat, not a man-made climate change story, and anyone who claims otherwise is either a gullible idiot or a lying charlatan. To emphasize the point, the two main factors causing and exacerbating the bushfires in Australia people deliberately starting the fires and environmentalist regulations are not even being mentioned, never mind debated, in the vast majority of mainstream media reporting on this subject. The BBC did a 12-minute piece about the bushfires, and neither of those factors were mentioned once. What they did mention was the apparent solution to eliminate carbon emissions entirely, a process that would completely devastate the economy and hurt poor people. It's around 50,000 workers in Australia are connected to the fossil fuel industry and we know that around 60% of Australia's electricity comes from coal-fired power stations. Great, let's put thousands of working class people out of work. Let's make fuel prices completely unaffordable for those on low or no incomes. Let's alienate and anger another generation of resentful rural inhabitants left behind by globalism. A generation who are already out on the streets in France, Germany and Holland protesting against these very same environmentalist regulations, simply to make middle class virtue signalers feel better about themselves as they spew hysterical debunked nonsense about climate change, while they lobby for green policies that actually make bushfires worse. Great idea! And listen, I know it's very easy to be emotionally manipulated by images of burned koalas and dead baby kangaroos, lulled into believing that if you just give your masters more power to tax, more power to regulate, more power to control, that they can make it all go away. But they can't make human stupidity and the sheer awesome force of mother nature ever go away. And they're lying to you. When are we going to stop listening to these people? They've been caught lying time and time again. Whether it be the experts who told us at the end of the 70s that a new ice age was coming, Paul Ehrlich's prediction that hundreds of millions of people would die of starvation due to crop failure by the 1980s, or the 2004 prediction that major European cities would be underwater and that Britain would be plunged into a Siberian climate by 2020, or Al Gore's doomsday warning that the Arctic would have ice-free summers by 2013. None of it happened. And yet now a certain teenage climate activist who is beyond question is spewing the exact same BS. How dare you! Someone whose message is amplified by the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio, a dude who takes private jets to pick up environmental awards and hangs out on 400-foot gas-guzzling yachts owned by Middle Eastern oil billionaires. Someone whose message is amplified by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, a couple who took four private jet trips in the space of just 11 days mainly so they could party at Elton John's mansion. Someone whose message is amplified by Arnold Schwarzenegger, a dude who has a garage full of muscle cars and tanks. No thanks. I'm gonna stop listening to those people, and I'm gonna realize that climate change policies aren't meant to control the climate. They're meant to control you. <laughs>